After Marty saved a wolf from the icy waters of a river in Nova Scotia, he thought that was the end of it. But the very next day, the wolf reappeared and led him on an incredible adventure that changed his life forever. Marty began hearing a strange noise shortly before midnight while working along the Atlantic coast of Nova Scotia, Canada. He was walking back from the old mining area when he heard a strange sort of moan. Fear gripped him as he realized that the sound wasn't human. He turned around slowly and immediately spotted a large dog floundering in the icy lake nearby. The poor creature was drowning, and its weak whimpers suggested it didn't have much strength left. It required help quickly, or it wouldn't make it. Marty immediately stepped towards the lake, but that's when he noticed something that made him halt in his tracks. That wasn't a dog, it was a wolf and an adult one. Now he was presented with a difficult decision. He wanted to aid the wolf, but he knew it would be perilous. He was also unsure whether the wolf would let him approach close. Even if he did manage to reach it, he couldn't know if it would attack him once it was safe. Marty took a moment to think about what to do. After considering pros and cons, he decided to take a chance and help the wolf struggling in the water. However, he suddenly realized he had no tools he could use to float to it. He would have to swim to it. Marty knew diving into the freezing water may be dangerous, especially given its location so far out in the lake at night. That afternoon, he had also hurt his ankle while trekking, and was feeling less than confident in his swimming abilities. A rescue mission might be extremely harmful, perhaps fatal, but he put those thoughts away and leapt into the lake. He hit the water forcefully and immediately felt the cold, but he ignored it and swam for the beast. Stroke after stroke, he kept his eyes glued on the wolf. Its head kept sinking underwater, and each time it stayed down a little longer. The poor beast was about to surrender. Marty willed his limbs to swim faster, gritting his teeth whenever a sudden burst of pain in his ankle made him wince. The freezing water was already making his limbs feel numb, and his injured foot felt heavier than ever. He couldn't imagine how tired the wolf was feeling. When he was just a few strokes away, he paused for a second. How was he going to grab it without eliciting a violent reaction? He couldn't just stretch his hand towards it, could he? But then, the wolf went underwater again. After 10 seconds, Marty realized it was not coming up again unless he dragged it up himself. So he swam until he was upon it, said a quick prayer, and reached a hand down. When his fingers brushed the fur of the wolf, he pulled up with all the strength he had in his arm. Once its head was outside the water, the full weight of its majestic body threatened to make Marty sink as well. Still, he gritted his teeth and started swimming towards the shore. The wolf was not unconscious yet, but it was too weak to fight against him. Marty soon felt the bottom of the lake bed beneath his feet. In less than a minute, he was standing upright. There he stood, standing firm in the water, grasping the wolf's neck and trying to determine what to do next. Was the wolf going to attack him if he let it go? Despite his fear, he decided the best thing he could do was to bring the wolf to shallow water, let it go, and let fate take over from there. When the wolf felt the sandy bottom of the lake under its paws, it scrambled to stand up. Marty gradually released his grasp, allowing the wolf's moist fur to slip between his fingers. When the wolf realized it was free, it jumped clumsily to the beach. After reaching the shore, it shook itself dry but continued to observe Marty, who was now back in deeper water. They stood there and looked at each other, both shivering, but both refusing to divert their eyes. Marty felt time stand still, and realized that despite the fatigue and the cold he was feeling, he was glad that he had risked his life to save such a majestic creature. Finally, the wolf turned and began walking away. Marty shivered, and not just from fear. He was still standing in the middle of the lake, shaking from head to toe in the freezing air of the night. He was going to catch pneumonia if he didn't get out soon. So he quickly reached the shore, took off his damp clothes, and wrapped himself up in his coat, boots, and scarf. His teeth rattling, Marty made his way back to town. Even if he'd managed to save a life, his day hadn't been productive in the slightest. He had been in the wilderness of Oak Island for two weeks, and hadn't found much yet. As he walked back towards his inn, he wondered if he was simply wasting his time. Marty was on a mission. His great-grandfather was a German immigrant 
who allegedly discovered a large sum of gold on Oak Island and buried it in an old mine shaft. On his deathbed, he divulged the shaft site with Thomas, a boarding house owner who had cared for him in his final years. Sadly, Thomas passed away soon after Marty's great-grandfather, leaving only cryptic notes about the location of the gold. At first, there was a lot of excitement about solving the puzzle that Thomas and Marty's great-grandfather left. Night after night, he sifted through the yellowed papers with their fading ink, doodles and words, attempting to piece together the riddle. Still, over time, the story of the hidden gold became just another legend, among many about Oak Island. The locals began murmuring that Marty's great-grandfather had taken the gold and then made up the whole narrative about discovering and burying it to cover his tracks. As a result, the story of the prospector and his stolen riches became simply another legend among many others in the region. Still, Marty believed his great-grandfather had told the truth and that the gold was still on the island. So, he purchased every map of the island he could find and studied every book and article about the available location. Slowly but surely, things started to make sense. The breakthrough came when he discovered an ancient diary stashed among his grandfather's belongings. It appeared to be quite old and was clearly written by someone whose mind was starting to fail, but Marty continued to stare at it and he began to detect certain patterns. He hoped this journal would help him grasp the secret signals concerning a hidden gold cache that his great-grandfather was said to have left behind. This was the moment Marty realized what he needed to do. He decided to take some time off and travel to the island in search of the truth about his family's background and the hidden riches. Marty's goal with his mission was to have fun and learn about his ancestors rather than to locate gold. If he discovered the gold, it would be fantastic, but it was not the most essential thing. But now, frozen and shivering, he realized that he wasn't having fun at all. At the inn, Marty took a warm shower and had some beef stew delivered to his room. As he ate, his mind wandered back to the wolf. He hoped it was safe now, and that it too had found shelter and food to regain the strength it had lost. Just then, he heard a low howl that made his blood freeze in his veins. He knew that he wasn't in danger anymore, but hearing the call of a wolf startled him from his well-deserved peace. Was he imagining it? He was tired enough to hallucinate, he thought. But the howl echoed again into the night. Hesitantly, Marty walked towards the window of his room and peeked outside. A shadow was prowling the streets. It seemed to notice his presence at the window and suddenly vanished into the darkness. Marty remained motionless, barely daring to breathe. The shadow appeared again, this time on the other side of the street, and moved closer to the door of his inn. That's when a street lamp cast light on its form. It was the same wolf he had rescued. Once again, it wasn't aggressive. It just stood there, staring at him, with its bright yellow eyes, just like it had at the lake. They just looked at each other for a while, then Marty reached into his plate, pulled a piece of stew, and threw it outside the window towards the wolf. Marty watched with bated breath as the wolf picked it up. For a bit, he could hear the beast eating in the dark. Strangely enough, he felt an unusual sense of peace wash over him. It was as if the wolf, rather than being a threat, was lonely and wanted some company on its terms. Perhaps this visit was its way of thanking him for saving its life. Marty didn't know but that night he slept with a smile on his face, knowing he had made a friend on the island. The next morning, Marty headed for the mountain to resume his quest for his great-grandfather's hidden wealth. He was on his way to Inscriptions Canyon, which Thomas had mentioned several times in his notebooks. Marty entered the canyon via massive basalt rocks and petroglyph-adorned walls. Some carvings portrayed local fauna, while others had bizarre symbols and inscriptions with seemingly extraterrestrial designs. Marty reached a point where the trail split. The left path went deeper into the canyon, but it was the right path that Marty was interested in. This path led to the old, collapsed gold mine he was eager to explore. Below, the Gold Canyon and Oak River sparkled in the distance. The trail narrowed, hugging a ledge before opening onto a small plateau. Marty stopped. As he looked ahead, the trail widened, and he heard a wolf howling. 
Standing before him again was the wolf, simply staring at him with its intense yellow eyes. Marty was now confident that the wolf did not consider him food and had no intention of harming him. He decided to nod at it as a show of recognition and keep strolling down the ledge. The wolf fixed its gaze on him. Of course, Marty was amazed, but what did the wolf truly want? Marty pressed his back against the rock wall and moved carefully along the ledge, placing one foot in front of the other. Out of the corner of his eye, he kept watching the wolf. As if convinced Marty would make it safely across, the wolf turned and vanished behind a pile of boulders. Marty found its behavior puzzling. He wasn't an expert on wolves, but this one behaved almost like a curious puppy, showing an unusual interest in him. Marty contemplated whether the wolf's actions could be interpreted as gratitude for saving it from the frigid water, but he soon discarded this notion as unrealistic. Surely a wolf's mental process couldn't be smart enough to assign human-like importance to the rescue. No, there must be another explanation. Marty kept cautious down the route, checking his surroundings for any indication of the wolf. There was nothing until lunchtime, when the temperature rose to 100 degrees and the sun beat down cruelly. Desperate for respite from the heat, Marty sought out a rock overhang or any place of shade where he could relax, cool down and check his maps. He needed to think out his next step towards the ancient gold mines. He found a shady spot to catch his breath and, like clockwork, the wolf appeared again. This time it confidently walked up, limping slightly, yet it seemed to convey a sense of familiarity, almost as if acknowledging an unspoken friendship. Marty tossed a piece of jerky towards it. The wolf eagerly grabbed the snack, retreated a short distance, and started to enjoy its meal. They both took a nap and waking up felt coordinated. The wolf mimicked his movements as Marty stretched and got up. From that point forward, the wolf became his quiet companion, following him at a respectful distance as they approached the ancient mine. Marty reached a vantage point ideal for his search as he continued his journey. He wasn't following directions from a letter, but rather a series of old journal entries he had discovered among his grandfather's belongings. These entries hinted at unique landmarks to look for, one of which was a natural rock formation resembling the head of a tribal chief on the side of Island Mountain. With binoculars in hand, Marty began a careful sweep of the landscape, searching for the rock formation that would lead him closer to his family's legacy hidden within the wilderness. Marty quickly found what he was looking for. Despite becoming aged and tarnished over time, the rock structure resembled the head of an Indian tribal chief. Marty needed to proceed ten clicks east from this site, based on the hints retrieved from his great-grandfather's final remarks, as translated by Thomas. Marty readily located the gorge that led into a valley, precisely as the diary entries had suggested. He adjusted his binoculars, found the gorge's entrance, and began his approach. The ever-present wolf followed with a familiarity that made it seem like they'd been companions for years. It took Marty about an hour to navigate through the tunnel and reach the opening on the other side. All the while, the wolf kept a steady distance. Entering the gorge, Marty was on a narrow trail flanked by steep rock walls. The entrances to ancient mining tunnels dotted the landscape, each a doorway to the past. While these openings were intriguing, Marty was on the lookout for one tunnel in particular, a specific entrance that, according to his research, might lead to the hidden treasures of his ancestors. The wolf appeared out of nowhere and rushed by Marty on the tight route. It took a few steps forward, turned to look Marty in the eye, and then trotted onward. Now and again, it halted and looked back to ensure Marty was still following. The wolf took him farther into the gorge. Along both sides, the tunnels continued, some with ancient, rusty mining gear at their openings and others that had collapsed. Suddenly, the wolf vanished. One second it was there, and the next it wasn't. Marty hurried to catch up and soon discovered the reason for the wolf's sudden disappearance. It had entered an old mining tunnel. The terrain dropped abruptly, roughly a 40-degree dip, heading straight to a tunnel opening where the wolf waited. Marty approached gingerly, not disturbing any loose gravel that may trigger a collapse. By the time he reached the tunnel's opening, 
the wolf had already gone inside. Marty turned his flashlight on and followed the beam into the earth's core. Occasionally, the wolf halted and looked back, its eyes catching the flashlight beam and becoming yellow. Then, at a split in the tunnel, the wolf took the right way and Marty followed, interested in what they may find together. Forty yards in, the tunnel opened into a massive cavern, part natural and carved out by miners long ago. Marty was convinced this work was done by miners from his great-grandfather's time, as something he remembered reading about in his old journals. Inside the cavern, Marty was surprised to find three gravestones. Gravestones in a mine shaft? He thought to himself. Curious, he walked over to read the names. The first gravestone said, Here lies McGinnis Crawford, murdered as a gold thief in 1867. Marty stood in silence for a moment. Throughout his journey, he had kept an open mind, not fully believing in the legends of his ancestors finding a stash of gold. But perhaps those weren't legends at all. The second tombstone stated, Here lies Daniel Simpson, murdered by the same gold thief in 1867. The inscription on the third monument seemed similar. Marty took a moment to collect his thoughts. So the gold had existed. Someone had stolen it and killed for it, and his great-grandfather had stumbled upon the stash during his time as a miner. Unfortunately, the clues ended here. Marty was a little disappointed. He was glad to know that his great-grandfather's tales were true, but at the same time, he had hoped to find something more interesting than gravestones down those tunnels. But when he was about to turn around and leave, he caught a flash of gold with the corner of his eye. The gravestones were gray, and the incisions on them were black, but some letters shone more than others, hinting at something sparkly behind them. Could it be possible that the gravestones had been built to hide the gold, rather than commemorate those who had died because of it? Marty grabbed his pocket knife, apologized to Mr. Daniel Simpson, and started scratching at the incision with the tip of the blade. A few scratches were enough to reveal an amazing discovery. The gravestones were indeed made of gold. The stone exterior was nothing more than a cover, a protection against thieves. But his great-grandfather must have discovered the truth nonetheless. Marty was now bursting with excitement. He had found a staggering amount of gold. However, he quickly realized there was no way he could bring it out right now. Those stones weighed a lot, and he was at the bottom of a mining tunnel. He would need to come back with help and tools. Excited, he turned around towards the wolf, and what he saw made his joy waver. The wolf had become restless. Marty noted that it appeared anxious to depart, moving closer to the tunnel's opening and waiting for him to follow. The wolf appeared in a rush, as if it sensed something would happen. Marty wondered whether the tunnel was ready to collapse, especially when he spotted pebbles shifting slowly. Marty gathered his bags and followed the wolf out of the tunnel system. Just after they left, there was a huge rumbling, indicating that the tunnel may have collapsed behind them. Luckily, Marty and the wolf were safely out of the area, spared from being caught in a cave-in. Marty shivered. The wolf had indeed just saved his life. However, this incident would probably prevent him from ever extracting the gold from the mines. His great-grandfather's amazing discovery was now forever lost, trapped under unforgiving stone. Strangely enough, he didn't feel too sad about it. He had just lived an amazing adventure, met an unlikely friend, and confirmed that his great-grandfather's diaries were not the product of a raving old man. Perhaps he too could write his own journal now, as something that his own great-grandchildren could one day use to go on adventures. Later that evening, the wolf showed up for the last time by the inn. Marty threw a piece of jerky towards it as he had done before. This time, the wolf caught it mid-air, then lay down in the street to enjoy its treat. After finishing, the wolf stood, its yellow eyes locking with Marty's for a moment as if saying goodbye. Then it turned and vanished into the night, never to be seen again. The wolf's origins, the purpose for their accidental meeting, and how it seemed to know precisely what Marty was seeking and how to direct him to it remains a mystery. Marty did not press too hard to answer these queries. 
After all, this was Island Mountain, a region cloaked in folklore, paranormal activity, and mysteries. Marty believes that the wolf was his great-grandfather's soul manifested in animal form, leading him through his adventure up the mountain. What a surprising story. Do you think Marty should have gone back for the gold? Do you have any tales about animals and their secrets? Share them with us in the comments. We'd really enjoy reading them. That's all for now. See you in the next video.